All right, hey folks, uh, today I am going to do the other part of my video where I'm talk uh, on thread chasing, where I'm actually going to turn the finial side. And this is for my urns that I have. So I've got a, a nice urn here, nice piece of mulberry. It's all dried and ready to start to get finished, but I need to make a top for it so I can get it sealed up. I've already got the insert made with the threads cut and if you're looking for more information on that you can go check out my other video uh, the first part of this series where I show you how to cut the female threads so we're there. gonna be using this as a reference and we're making finials to fit so this is gonna be a little bit of fitting along with more in the turning and thread chasing so what I've got is I've got my stock here it's I'm turning most of mine out of persimmon I do occasionally do some out of blackwood and what I need to do in this case is we're gonna be cutting the threads first and getting those to fit so we're gonna be working off of this portion here basically and once we get those threads cut they fit the urn body, then we'll flip them around and actually do the detail work uh, for making the decorative top. And when I do that, I'm I'm just kind of I'm kind of free flowing mostly. I just I just kind of make forms that I think are nice and appealing, and I don't I don't really have any standard patterns or anything that I use. I just want to make sure I get the coverage on my. Uh, urn vessel right and then after that it's just whatever I think looks good so I'm starting out with about it's close to about a two inch diameter uh, piece of persimmon it's all just standard in grain stock so this is all in grain basically like traditional spindle turning uh, got it set up in here in my chuck got it tenoned this is probably about two inches overall. It's what I'm usually like to work with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to face off this end and get that trued up and cleaned up. And then we're going to start to recess this area down so that it's going to be slightly larger than the opening on my insert and then we'll reduce that area and that's going to be the portion of this where the threads are going to be cut. I'm probably going to cut threads on about quarter inch to three eighths of an inch off. I'm going to have a little bit of a recess behind here so the when I'm cutting the threads they won't run right into this shoulder. So what I do is I get my caliper and you're taking your caliper so that it's just a little bit larger than this diameter right here and that's what you're going to use as your reference. All right, so I'm turning it about somewhere around 1400 RPM. And like I said, we're going to start by facing this off first, and then we're going to part down the diameter. I'm not really looking for anything super pretty because this is going to be on the underside. Um, so as long as you're, I mean it can be slightly concave, slightly convex, just as long as you kind of get the surface cleaned up and then I'll sand that with 220. Alright, so now we're going to reduce the diameter down to what we have our caliper set at.
The other thing I like to do is, at least on this stock, since the diameter is, the overall diameter is much larger than what I need it to be, I like to go ahead and get that trimmed down a little bit right now so I don't have a huge shoulder in the way. And what my intent is is that I'm going to make the finial recess back from this shoulder of the insert about 3.30 seconds, something like that. It's a little bit arbitrary, but that's, that's about the diameter that I'm shooting for, and I just eyeball that. And you're not want to, going to want to go exact to it right now. You'll have the opportunity to fine tune that down a little bit later. Okay, so here are the important things for cutting your threads. Is first you're going to need to put a chamfer on this edge right here. And you do that so that your thread chasing tool has something to start indexing its threads to. And the other thing is you'll take your parting tool and you'll part in the area that's slightly smaller diameter than what you expect your threads are going to be. So when you're running your thread uh, chasing tool across here, you're not running your threads right up into this shoulder. And I'm doing about a width and a half on my parting tool. I got a small handle uh, kind of shallow curve. So, you're only going to be doing just a little bit, and then this area will be what you cut, for, cut your threads on. I like to do the width of the, uh, the tool, and I like to do about another half. Also when I do this, I like to take my parting tool on this shoulder right here, and I like to kind of angle that slightly inside. And the reason I do that is that when these threads are turned and you, and you screw this onto your body, if you have a concave surface, you're going to create a gap between your finial and, you know, in my case, a hollow body. So we're using this thread chasing tool. Uh, I got a 16 teeth per inch, and I, I like to cut my threads generally somewhere around 300 RPM. And so the idea is you're going to start off getting your first couple of threads established on the outside. And you're going to want to have the tool angled like this and start working the tool. Once you start to get some threads developed, you'll start bring, rotating the tool over and start just little at a time. This is a pretty just sm small cutting process. You can start getting in a little bit to be a little bit more aggressive once you have all your threads starting to establish. 
And the idea is you're going to want you're going to get less chatter and you're going to get less tear out in your threads is as, as you're turning you keep the tip down. So what I'll end up doing is I'll start slightly up to find the threads and once I'm start starting to run on track I'll angle the tip down. So I'll lift the base of the tool and start doing that. So this is process of coming across and then angling down that that's what you're going to have to get the hang of. The other thing I find that helps is I usually like to keep my tool rest slightly above center. And you're just going to start slowly to get your first few threads just starting to get cut. And then as those get a little bit deeper, then you're going to start to work your tool around. Okay, I'm now at the point where I have my threads cut and they're still pretty crude but I have enough of the thread established that the tool will actually start pulling itself. So once you get to that point you really the most important things I find is that you have good pressure from my thumb on the tool to the tool rest and you let the tool pull itself. You want to make sure that the tool's not vibrating because that's what's going to start causing your chatter and the chatter will cause your threads to kind of come to break off and they're not going to be as be as a clean cut and on some species like a lot of the tropical species they're a lot more forgiving they can cut a much finer thread uh, if you're going to try to cut fine threads on some of the domestic species they're a little bit more prone to breaking off so you got to be a lot crisper on your cuts and you're going to let the tool do most of the work here this isn't a a lot of force in or anything that you really have to do all you're really doing is just guiding and the tool's going to cut itself so it's kind of a low pressure operation at this point I can I'll start here and you can actually let <clears throat> you'll see that the tool is kind of moving itself and I'm riding on these bottom on these bottom portions right here and I'm not actually doing the cutting so that's how you're going to want to start off and this is what I was meaning by you can actually have the tip of your teeth up until you engage the threads and then slowly work it down You're going to take very light passes. And what I'm looking at at this point is I have my eye looking at how the threads are cutting over here. And I'm going to, and I'm mostly, at least right now, looking at these back threads, and I want them to all be about the same height. So currently, this back thread's a little bit higher. So I'm putting more of my cutting interest on this back edge and so that's this basically where your eye is going to be looking trying to establish that all these threads are at the same and equal height and if you want in my case I'm trying to get these back ones trimmed down all I'm doing is I'm I'm angling my tool over a little bit more until they get all about the same and then I'm doing even strokes.
And so for me, the operation is at this point, I'm just I'm cutting and then I'm fitting. And so right now, my threads are still too large overall, so I'm going to have to reduce the diameter some more. Usually, I will start reducing this front edge a little bit till they the first couple of threads start to uh, twist into my form. At that point, I have a larger diameter in my back and a smaller diameter in my front. And if you do that, you're not going to be able to thread all the way. But I'm doing that just so I know that I'm really close to getting my fit right in the front and then I will match my diameter across in the back. So right now my threads have more of a conical appearance. They're kind of going like this. Yeah, I'm still too large. As you reduce your thread, you may need to lift your tool rest up just a hair too. to catch just a little bit so I'm getting pretty close You'll notice I had a little bit of that thread pop out right there and got a little bit aggressive too much trying to take off too much at a time. Still got some more. I also want to show you that this is how I'm holding my tool as well. So I have the tool rest right about here and I'm, I'm trying to really grab it right there and keep it on the tool rest and keep my right hand positioned and back it up because I'm really trying to keep it from chattering so much. starting to get. Okay, you'll notice right about here I'm not able to go all the way. So my threads got too tight. So at this point I'm pretty good closer down in here and I'm tighter up here at the top. So I'm going to need to work on the threads a little bit closer to the shoulder. I'm also going to take real light passes right now because I'm pretty close to everything so I'm trying to get every all my threads cleaned up real nicely okay now I can I'm pretty much there. So the other thing that I've found is I'm going to try to keep my fit slightly loose because a lot of times I've found that it feels good right now 
But after I get everything off the lathe, that oftentimes the finney will be too tight and I have to adjust it after that. So I started making my fits a little bit looser. Okay, that fits pretty good. <clears throat> and I got a good seal on my shoulder up here too. And the last thing you want to do to your threads is you want to get some 400 grit, which I have to find. Real fine sand paper here. And you're going to want to knock the points down off the threads a little bit. I also like to run it down the thread grooves too to kind of help clean those up a little bit. I do this to help prevent the really sharp threads from breaking over the lifetime of this. And so what I have, I've made some jigs that have matching threads already. And I'm going to use these so I can mount them in the lathe and then turn the top. I've already got a little bit of a shoulder created there, but I'm going to want to reduce that diameter slightly. This is going to be the largest diameter on the finial, close to where it fits in the insert. I know I'm going to want this to be slightly smaller, but with the design I have in mind, I'm thinking about kind of rounding this corner down. So I think I'm going to leave that diameter where it is, because it's going to get either through you know, a couple of small passes with a skew or through sanding, that diameter is going to get reduced down and it'll be a lot closer to where I want it. So I pretty much focus a lot of my efforts more into the top and getting those areas thinned down. And at this point you're really up to personal preference. All the, all the main issues in terms of functionality are already done. You got your threads cut, they fit well, and so as long as you can make this section, make it however you like, whatever you like the look of, you got a lot of lot of options there. But for the sake of this, I'll just show y'all what I'm gonna do today and sort of what I have in mind. All right, so I've got it threaded on. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna turn the finial. I'll kind of give you a couple of loose guidelines that I do that I work around and give you an idea about how I go about making what I do. I don't I don't really work off any plans. I'm just kind of making up a form out of my head. I like to keep all my finials different. There's some there's some similarities from one urn to another for me, but in general I don't I don't like to make products that are all exactly the same. So I'm back to turning about 1400 again. I typically will go about 3 8 7 16 keep this area large and then this whole area above that I'll take down to about 11 sixteenths and then after that I just I kind of freeform everything
I actually like using micro micro tools for this. I pretty much do everything with a fingernail gouge, uh, just a gouge, a round nose, and a skew, and that pretty much takes care of everything that I'm I want to do. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And so from here, I'm just, you sand it up and that's pretty much it. All right, here you go. <clears throat> That's the final product. And that would be it. And that'll finish it off. Now it's ready for finish.